Good morning, my friend. Hey, hello. Good morning. Uh, let me try to uh, place the camera. So I think like that it's going to be okay. Did you say, so, how did, are you? You, did you say place the camera or the camera? <laughs> the camera, the camera. Uh, yeah. Okay. Jordi, uh, welcome to Inkish and welcome to uh, this uh, day where we have uh, the title Get to Work. So um, we met last week and I'm pretty impressed with uh, the company that you work for, Karma. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and, uh, and the company that you have recently joined forces with. So, uh, so first of all, thank you very much for spending time with us. So it was great. So what can I say about Kama? So uh, you have seen it's a very small company, very familiar. We have a great team. Having visits like you uh, coming uh, to Kama makes everything even more exciting. But yeah, so uh, we're in a in a process of growing, shaping a little bit the the. the how we approach the market so there are many things that we have we want to do uh, so we will need some time but everything and this is a good news for all of us uh, especially for the Kama employees of course that everything seems to be on track so we have many new changes at the, at the highest level uh, the alignment between us and with our advisory board is is very very clear uh, we have a sharp direction uh, and yeah, so we are ready to 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 change the future of Kama and the future of the post press uh, for all our customers. Yeah? Mm. Um, what surprised me because, as I also told you, I did not know Kama very well. I did uh, some interviews with uh, some of your colleagues up for Hunkle Innovation Days, and and uh, I was a little bit surprised when I got to you because, as I also said in my, I did some social media from you. I was like. Uh, Kama is a German company, uh, almost 130 years old, and and uh, of course, uh, 130 years ago, it was not uh, uh, Eastern Bloc and communism, but uh, the, the, the 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 being located in Dresden and uh, have developed, you know, in the let's say in the industrialization under uh, the communism and and the East Bloc, made your engineers take some totally different approaches to uh, some technologies that today seems to be. I mean, lucky punch for a digital transformation, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So this is the message. I'm really glad that you uh, got it in in two seconds or even one. But yeah. So as you said, uh, so we at Kama, we always follow, uh, let's say, uh, our own path, our own way of doing things. Which uh, I'm not saying that is better or worse. Is simply different, and by coincidence, uh, which is really good for us. All what we have been developing during the last uh, many many years now fits very very well to the new trends in the in the in the industry. So mm -hmm. everybody uh, moving to short runs, every everybody moving to to all what where we can really bring a lot of value and where we really excel. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a it's the perfect timing for Kama to to really explain and to use all what we have been uh, done for these uh, years but yeah definitely we have follow our own path without uh, being disconnected which in one hand is very sad because all the political things so we were totally disconnected from the western side of the of the world mm -hmm. uh, but yeah uh, everything uh, keep uh, work uh, by then and it's still working and yeah so uh, as i said uh, all what we did uh, fits very, very well to the new trends in the in the packaging business or in the commercial business. Yeah. Mm. And and talking about that, just for people who don't know Kama, I mean, basically you have focused on, and uh, commercial print and on packaging, but specifically into folding gluers and uh, into uh, hot stamping and and uh, die cutting, right? Um, that is like the, the like the main uh, areas of uh, Kama, I believe. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, I'm sure that you will talk about it in, uh, in, during the, this uh, this uh, hour we have together, but I mean, what I was very uh, fascinated about when I saw, for example, your you have an automated uh, or like like a uh, folding gluer machine where all the setup is basically done by a servo engine. So you basically just click one button and then set up everything for for let's say. Uh, 
uh, typical products for the pharmaceutical or also because it has some uh, some braille opportunity built into it uh, uh, can, can you explain a little bit more about this product sure but uh, if you allow me not only about this product so uh, i will I, I will use that to explain a little bit our, our approach to the market mm -hmm. so uh, the 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 what makes uh, come a little bit different is uh, the fact that we really understand or we always wanted to help our customers from many different perspectives and mm -hmm. and here it's not only about technology it's also understanding that to have the right uh, operator with the right skills is not always easy no. uh, also also in case that you have different shifts you can have a very skilled operator uh, in on the daily shift but then on the night shift uh, there is a big difference uh, for many different reasons we were uh, we try to help our customers from many different angles and as you're saying uh, we have even developed softwares to in the in this in the field of folders and words where the skills are really important mm -hmm. just to just to be less dependent of the of the operator and and it's his skills just to just to keep the high quality uh, in the production but this is what we do with all the products so let's say that basically we can divide our production between uh, die cutters hot stampers which is one one field and then folders and words, folder and words and in the both in both segments we always try to increase a lot the efficiency mm -hmm. by using our machines and uh, reducing uh, make ready times reducing waste making everything so simple and and and, and this is what makes Kama unique so it's uh, everything is about fast make ready times uh, fast changeovers and and having plenty of assistance for the operators to make their life much easier mm. yeah. um, it's amazing it's amazing <laughs> amazing, <laughs> amazing yeah. Yeah. that's uh, that's something we have to work on jody <laughs> <laughs> no uh, um, uh, i mean i think you're totally right uh, another thing that i um, that i also found interesting that we spoke about actually before i went to to dresden and that was uh, um you <laughs> Of course, your thing is very analog because when the when the day is over, it is a it's a paper processing tool basically. But it seems that it fits very well into the digital uh, age because you are so uh, uh, aligned with the other trends in digital, like personalization, like uh, fast setup time, uh, uh, close to zero waste. Uh, uh, and that that is like you know when I spoke to a friend that uh, um, uh, works with the robots and Uh he basically said, told me that one of the interesting thing he saw with the uh, with for example your is it called ProCut what was it called ProCut seventy four or ProCut something like that ProCut seven so ProCut seventy six yeah. seventy six sorry yeah uh, what, when he was uh, 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 telling me about what he, he was thinking he said that having a machine where you can basically change. Uh, the hot stamping uh, actually minutes after he has finished the job and basically having a very very fast setup time basically gives you the opportunity to for the same price as a competitor would cost maybe have multiple machines uh, where you can basically have a, a much faster uh, total production for the same cost and even uh, robots might be something that could be integrated into enabling uh, even uh, better productivity that seems to me that okay the the path for the karma products is like okay we can go into almost every size of a company you can go into a small company with one machine but you could go into a larger operation with multiple machines where where do you see uh, karma in the market positioning uh, in relation to that for example so definitely this is all what you're saying about uh, automation of the processes and, and and making the connection with the the processes before uh, post press so meaning printing for sure this is one of the paths that we are going to explore mm. uh, we are already in talks with many companies trying to bring this uh, the, the last piece of automation to all what we do because uh, from the from the mechanical uh, standpoint or, or from what we do it's really difficult to go uh, beyond where we are already. So, uh, as you said, with one machine, we can do die cutting, stamping, moving from one process to the other in the minutes. With the folder and glue, with the automated folder and glue, we can change from one job to the next one in two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
can we do that in one minute? Uh, maybe yes, but it's really worth, most likely not. So uh, uh, that's why the next step is going through through automation with robots or cobots, uh, making all the process even easier for the operators and reducing the, the, uh, the risk of human errors. So uh, at the end of the day, someone has to set up uh, the tooling. The tooling has to be choose or has to be taken from a, a rack Mm. and has to be placed in the machine in the right position. So we, we can do all of this in a kind of automated way. And, and this is definitely the next, uh, the next big development that we're going to bring uh, at Kama. Uh, hopefully no one from my competitors is listening, <laughs> listening to that. But, uh, Don't come uh, it. <laughs> yeah. but no, no, but uh, in any case, uh, our positioning is very simple. So we, we, we have uh, amazing competitors. So uh, the, our competitors, all of them are beautiful companies doing amazing products, high speed, high quality, high, high productivity. But we are not there. So what we do is totally different. So we are uh, always uh, jumping to, to the market from the point of efficiency, trying to make the most of one single machine or trying to reduce the micro times to show trying to be efficient mm -hmm. or trying to be extremely flexible with one machine capable to do uh, many, many different things. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes us different. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not really concerned that if my competitors are listening to that because we are usually we are not competing in the same field so uh what they do is amazing what we do is amazing and we just uh, we only have different approach to the markets mm. uh, yeah so. but uh, I, basically i think that that when it comes to competition first of all i think that competition is healthy because that keeps us on the toes to develop better products for our customers but secondly i also think that competition is also about finding your niche in the market and I remember that, that uh, when, again, when I visited you last week, I was under the impression that you're not trying to compete with the Bobs of the world. You're not trying to compete with the largest ones in the world. You're basically very loyal to the niche that you have identified. What just happens to be very fortunate for Karma is basically the fact that, that the world is changing to the shorter print runs, faster setup time, personalization, uh, maybe even down to the products of one, basically. Right? So you have <laughs> you have focused on a niche, and that niche is what it seems to be growing right now, and uh, the way I see it. So, uh, yeah, as I said, we were lucky because all what we have been developing because of different circumstances, most likely political circumstances or whatever, is what drove us to where we are today. And, and, and all of a sudden, we just realized that we have the product that many printers are looking and at uh, today, which is not exactly what our competitors are focusing or are doing today. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so uh, to, to, to make it uh, or, or to summarize a little bit, I will say this situation. So uh, an understanding that Kama, and this is something that I, I will say that's unbelievable. It's impressive. And we're super proud of this. Kama is the inventor of the creasing line, creasing line is i will say one of the years ago uh, joy yeah, yeah. you cannot live on that's that not matter right <laughs> no 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 but but, but but listen to what i want to say so we invented the creasing line uh which is something very important in the folding carton business so you cannot fold if you don't have creasing lines uh, you cannot have folders and rules if you don't have creasing lines mm. uh, but still many people out there they don't know who kama is mm. uh, and this is because of this political situation and all of that so uh, if we will be a company located in on, on what was the western side of Germany, mm -hmm. most likely everybody will identify Kama as the uh, first producer of die cutter machines in the market. And we are, mm -hmm. but because we were on the on the wrong side mm -hmm. of Germany, mm -hmm. uh, not many people they, they are aware of this. And this is exactly uh, our task now mm -hmm. is just to make very clear to the world that uh, we, we are here, we are producing these products which are uh, fitting very, very well to what they want to do. And we are not newcomers. As you mm -hmm. say, 130 years of history, mm -hmm. developing, not the same thing, but developing uh, the same uh, way of doing things that we have at Kama. Mm -hmm. Always thinking on reusing as much as possible, the mm -hmm. being as efficient as possible and being as flexible as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, uh, I mean, you're totally right about that. The creasing line is, of course, like uh, 
it's just like a crazy uh, thing that you can that you can be the one that have invented it and i saw the the patent that you actually had on your wall which is of course expired but it's amazing to think of that of course the ideas that we today take for granted uh, of course come from somewhere right and and apparently uh, this is like where it started when it came from from uh, from karma with the with the crease line um, and i also want to say something that you know despite being part of first the ddr and the, uh, the eastern german uh, republic and now part of the the, the buddhist uh, deutschland um, is uh, one of the things that you put with capital letters on your machine is is uh, made in germany uh, how important is the legacy and you know the german engineering in let's say in a global perspective i mean is it do you i mean you come from barcelona but do you think it is a is that a brand that i mean is that you know I have a 10 years old Mercedes and I, I just think it's a fantastic car, to be honest. Uh, uh, when I see a German engineering, at least it used to be something that was like really the best of best. Is it still like this or, or why is Kamer using that, that uh, big capital letters made in Germany on your machines? So, uh, uh, f first of all, because it's true. So, it made in Germany. All what we do uh, is done in Germany. So, uh, if we will produce in other parts of the world, uh, most likely we cannot use the sticker or this logo. Uh, but all what we do is produced in our factory. Uh, you have seen this factory. So, uh, we produce all the small parts, the bigger parts. Everything is done in Germany. And uh, I'm from Spain, of course. Uh, uh, I cannot really judge this in the right manner, but I will say that it, even it's a kind of message from the from the company being located in Germany, in the east side of of Germany, saying this is made in Germany. Now it's part of the of of Germany, and and the most important thing uh, for countries which are not in Europe, this is a very power message. So, mm. especially customers in Asia, customers in America. Uh, they really, they really appreciate the German engineering as mm -hmm. as many of us. Uh, but the, the the message is much more powerful if you talk to a customer. I don't know in any country in Asia Pacific or in Latin America, if they if they really understand that everything is produced in Germany, everything is is uh, has this German engineering behind and the German mentality mm -hmm. uh, behind. It gives some additional confidence. Uh, I'm also an engineer, uh, but uh, I can tell you that engineers in many other countries, we work in a different way as the, as the German engineers. So this is uh, not good, not bad. It's just it's just a fact. Different. So yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I want to share with the audience again one of the things I was. Uh, it, it sounds like I'm. I'm promoting karma and i'm not promoting karma but still it's like when you travel and visit a lot of different companies i can't help think about how fortunate i am to see so many different kind of things when you travel and for example again with the procard uh, 76 um, uh, i mean you had like just for people to understand it uh, in the same machine you have uh, uh, hot stabbing and and die cutting uh, I don't know how uh, is that the standard. I don't know, but what is interesting about it is that then you can add a conveyor to it, and then you have stripping and blanking uh, built into it. And as I understand from you, uh, most uh, of your competitors, or maybe every competitors in the world, they would need to have some kind of tooling in order to do that stripping and blanking. But in the camera thing, it is to me it was almost like a. <laughs> and so simple that I could not understand it because basically you have your engineers have developed let's say some rubber wheels that basically how they turn ba basically do the stripping and blanking uh, so you can take uh, the output of the of the Procut 76 uh, strip and blank it with even without any artifacts on on the on the on the print put it directly into a folding gluer machine and then basically just make boxes so the entire process is not just the the die cutting and, and process, which is very fast, and and the ability to use the same machine for, for two technologies, but it's also that the t total setup time of making the the let's say you have the sheets with the print, uh, which was also interesting from the perspective because you had like up to was it two camera inspection systems that may basically make that you can you can twist the paper so you always get full registration, which is also interesting in a digital context. And then you can take that material and put directly into the folding glue. Click one button, it sets up everything, and then basically you have you have finished boxes, right? In minutes, basically, right? 
Yeah, so uh, the, the advantage on the make ready uh, that we have compared to any other process uh, it's, uh, it's 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 incredible. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's unbeatable. So uh, if you if you compare all the production, all the output that you can have using Kama, Postpress, or any other solution, uh, we are by far uh, much faster. Mm -hmm. But uh, it does not mean that this is something that uh, could be used or, or any customer can find the benefits on what we do. So in, 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 if someone is doing these super long runs that they need to have the printing machines and the finishing machines running for 24 hours, most likely our solutions are either too small or, or, or not uh, industrial as they would like to see, even if we are super industrial, but we are much more focused on the short runs. Mm. Uh, in, in case that someone is doing short runs, and by short runs, I mean even up to 10,000 sheets, B2 half format sheets, uh, our solution is unbeatable today. So because as you say, with the stripping and blanking unit that we have tools free, uh, we can uh, save, or the customer, they can save a lot of money mm. and a lot of time. Uh, we have the software, uh, which is called, uh, we are very good uh, finding names for the software. So it's called <laughs> Kama Helper. So <laughs> it's very, very good. So uh, it helps uh, <laughs> with the Kama equipment to set up the, the stripping and blanking unit. So, but uh, only only uh, uh, saying to the system how the box that you want to strip and blank uh, it, it looks like, uh, you know exactly how to position all the wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, all of this yeah, can be controlled by the Kama uh, job manager, again, a very good name, so which controls all the different machines and, and we can keep track of what is happening in all the different machines for one production. So imagine for a second that you're thinking about pharma mm -hmm. products, where you really need to be on, on control of what is happening from printing till the end of the process. Uh, we haven't said that, but in our folders and rules, we also have inspection. We have many other uh, artifacts or systems to to help the converter mm -hmm. to be sure that he's delivering the right quantity and the right quality to the to the end customer. So with uh, with our job planner, with our job helpers, uh, with everything, uh, we reduce a lot the waste, which is, uh, for instance, in in pharma or in high end packaging, is extremely important because of the cost and to avoid counterfeiting and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so we reduced a lot the waste, we reduced a lot a lot the time, which is always important for the converters, mm -hmm. but we keep uh, all the production on track so we know what is happening at every single moment and we can repeat, we can rec or we can save all the all the perimeters to start again the same production, maybe two days later or three months later, does not matter. So yeah. in that sense, I will say that we are not digital, but we are very digital mindset, mm. so very digital oriented, and mm. uh, most likely the most digital oriented uh, company doing post press mm. is in this in this segment. Mm. Um, Jordi, um, um, I mean, just for people to know, because what you're talking about here is, of course, uh, also interesting from let's say the mega trends of where we see our industry moving right now, because I mean, you have a background from. Uh, from HP, also with the uh, uh, the Heidelberg, um, what was it called? Uh, the Prime Fire. Prime Fire, and also worked with the digital equipment from from Kurt. So I mean, you understand the packaging industry. You have talked to so many customers that when you talk about uh, the, the the placement of Kama uh, in the market, uh, this is not just paperwork. It is basically you have seen uh, companies and how they how you believe that the comma can fit into to their production workflow, right? I mean, your background is interesting because you know the production side, you know the embellishment side, you know the, 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 the finished product. So when you talk about, let's say, uh, expensive uh, luxury packaging, I mean, uh, putting a expensive embellishment, putting a lot of effort into the print, and, and then if you have to, to trash 10, 15% of your circulation, uh, that, that becomes something that, that plays a role the more expensive and the more uh, luxury products you're producing, right? So uh, it did. So during my uh, the jobs or, or the positions that I had in other companies before joining Kama, uh, I, I had the privilege, uh, the luxury to travel to many countries, many continents to discuss with many uh, printers or converters about what they want to have. So uh, I will define uh, what they do as uh, I, usually I, I have sold 
solutions for many years, not 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 really products, because in uh, when I was at HP, at Heldeberg, and even at Kurt, I, I we were still in the process of introducing new products to the market. So uh, that's why I had the chance to talk to many customers about what do you need to have or what do you expect from us or what you would like to, to see. And, and you know what? Uh, always the discussion was printing. It's important. Let's say it's 20, 25% of the process. The rest is pre-press and post-press. Mm. And, and Post press has a very, it's a big percentage of the full production. Mm-hmm. And, and for whatever is the reason, uh, post press is always much more oriented on productivity, 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 high speeds, productivity, productivity. And Kama is just bringing another piece of, which fits very well to the digital uh, setup. It's okay, it's productivity, but also it's a very quick uh, change over mm-hmm. time from one job to another reducing the, the capex investment using one machine for multiple different uh, uh, options and so on and that's why when when I had these talks about joining Kama honestly and and it's not because I'm Kama it's also because I'm a Kama of course but but I, I, I thought yeah uh, understanding the the where Kama is coming from with these uh, political things what is today and where the market is moving towards, uh, I thought, wow, this is something that really uh, could, could have a big impact in the coming years. And I want to be the So I want to be one of the persons uh, making this impact. Uh, now, for the first time, after many years, I have a product that can be sold every day. So uh, we have uh, we have sold machines at Kama. I don't know how many units, but thousands of machines, whatever. Uh, we have Kama units in all the countries in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in the smallest countries. And so we have products which can be sold, uh, not easily, but mm-hmm. can be sold. Uh, it's not about creating or discussing about a kind of dream with the customers. Mm-hmm. It's about bringing the right solution that in many cases, they are not aware that this solution exists. And many customers or many printers, they are already benefiting of this. Mm-hmm. So m- many, many of the pharma producers today, they are already using our solutions mm-hmm. and they want to keep at to keep this as a big secret because they don't want to have the competitors using also the same thing. Mm. But um, uh, every product comes with a price tag and with the changes in market, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the ROI on investing uh, in uh, in technology where you have very short uh, uh, setup time and where you have very little waste. If you right. go into a digital space where the volumes are getting smaller and smaller, the percentage of an hour that you set up uh, the machine must become more and more important so is the i mean do customers recognize that that uh, i don't know the price tag and i don't care mm-hmm. about it here in public but i mean i was just wondering does that mean that when you sell a machine that people can easily recognize that despite whatever price tag it has it basically gives a faster roi because of the uh, the the setup time and the flexibility of the machines yes so uh faster roi is one of the key uh, points. Uh, I'm always saying the same. Seeing is believing. Uh, it's difficult to explain all of this. Uh, as you said, you were somehow uh, impressed with all the different solutions that we have. And and that's why I'm always saying seeing is believing. So any customer, they have to come to our demo center or any of the demo centers that we have with our dealers uh, here and there to see our solutions and to really understand what the, what are the benefits of our solutions mm-hmm. is not only is not only the return of the investment is as i said is uh, the the reducing the the human or the potential human errors is reducing the need of having skill operators uh, is having a, a solution which was or all our solutions have been designed to have minimum maintenance. Mm. So this is a big advantage. So if you have a system that you can really uh, rely that it's going to work for the next, uh, as we said before, German engineering and and build just to reduce as much as possible the maintenance, uh, you know that you if you have your Kama, and this is how our customers, they call our systems, they say, my Kama. My, my Kama, they don't talk about ProCAD 76, they say my Kama, and they know that their Kamas are working for, for many, many years with uh, low uh, quantity of issues, 
we will have issues like everybody, of course, but because of the of the simplicity of the mechanics that we have, uh, these issues are much lower. And thinking on, on being very, very efficient. That's why the return of the investment is very important, but is not only the factor to decide in favor of Canva. It's one of them. And this is it's very important, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't remember who told me, but is it true that if you work in, a, let's say, a full-blown packaging company and you have a lot of print runs, but uh, sometimes the setup time on, on these machines are long, then you sometimes have one line for one product and another line for the next one and so on. Uh, so, I mean, I'm asking because I have been with with, uh, with uh, packaging companies, but I have never really paid attention to whether they just used one line for one product. Uh, but do you say that, that seriously that the setup time of, if you have to manually do all the things, takes so long time that it is simply impossible to make money on a short run or... So, see, uh, if you have one of the typical folders and rules that you can buy in the market from our, from one of our competitors, uh, as I said, the, these machines are fantastic for very long runs. In the case of short runs, uh, you can, of course, do the short runs with those machines, but in, in the majority of the cases, you will need, let's say, and being quite generous, 40, 45, 50 minutes to set up a new job. And that's what on, a, on, on your machine is like... Uh, one minute, two minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. So we can do that. Uh, if we move from straight line boxes to straight line boxes, which is the typical box in pharma, we can do that in three minutes or two minutes. So, so, uh, so, so uh, but in the in the time that the others they are doing the make ready, we have already done the production because yeah. again we're talking about short runs. Yeah. So uh, you you do the preparation and the production in the same time that they prepare the machine. So does that mean that that uh, I mean when you specifically set within the same boxes, does that mean that that the folding glue with the servo motors does that have limitations in what type of boxes it can produce and that is so you're basically making a product that is maybe a limited a little bit in diversification of boxes but then it has a very fast setup time for specific boxes is that how it works exactly so that we have two folder and rules so the automated and the manual yeah. So the automated is what we call Flexfold 52 and basically works for strain like boxes, which is a typical box in the pharma business or crash lock bottom boxes, which is more, more typical in the cosmetics uh, segment or high end packaging. So again, segments for short runs, uh, high, high value. And you, usually typically the boxes are pretty much the same. I mean, you only need to change some dimensions and then that's why we can automate everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, with our manual uh, folder and glue, we can do everything, mm-hmm. everything. So you can move from one basic straight line boxes to a very complex capacity folder in 40 minutes or in 45 minutes, but you have the, the, the chance to do whatever. So in the packaging business, mm-hmm. uh, we really focus on this cosmetic uh, pharma high-end packaging mm-hmm. on the commercial and publishing. What we offer is one machine which can do everything. Mm-hmm. And coming back to what you said in packaging, usually they have one machine for one type of product mm-hmm. because of these long uh, make ready times. Mm-hmm. So, it makes, so, it solution. Make, so it does make yep. sense to have one machine for one long print run. So, uh, so uh, usually this is what happens. So you can see in these big packaging houses, you can see multiple uh, folder and rules. Mm. Usually it's not only one product, but it's, let's say, one type of product per machine, just to reduce as much as possible the make ready times. Okay. Uh, what we offer is one machine to do the typical boxes of packaging with very, very, very quick uh, uh, preparation. Mm-hmm. And then one manual solution to do everything for the commercial printers who usually do all of this by hand. So they have uh, uh, human labor doing all of this by hand. So we bring a solution to automa- to, to do also all of this in an automated way. Mm. Because I remember again also from last week that with the, auto, the, the manual uh, machine, then you have your engineers have developed the software. You basically visualize... Uh, let's say the PDF and its folding uh, patterns and you animate that through the software and then basically that gives you what tooling needs to be located at different positions. So yeah, I think uh, one of the operators said to me that basically people with limited skills and, and maybe not an education can set up even a complex machine. Is that, is that, really, is that really, and is that something that is unique to Karma or is that just how it is in this industry or? 
So see, see the value of this. Uh, and what I'm going to say is not really talking in my favor, but uh, it will uh, explain uh, uh, a lot uh, how it could help to any printer. So I'm using our own software to understand all the different types of jobs that we can fold with our ProFold. And the name of this manual machine is ProFold. I'm not an expert in, in folding and gluing, so I have worked all my life in printing and, and also post press, but not in folding and gluing. And, and then when I saw this software, my first reaction was, wow, I'm going to install this in my computer just to play with this, to see what type of tooling is needed to do that type of job or whatever. So we have experts in house that they see any type of job and they, they can tell you in, in, in two seconds. Uh, to do this job, you will need to have this tooling here this tooling here and they can simulate what the software is doing just because of using their experience mm -hmm. that's not my case and that's not the case of many operators and many people uh, outside in the market mm -hmm. so that's why with the software you can you can say i want to do this job i want to do all this fold uh, and i want to glue here and there and then you can visualize how all of this is working mm -hmm. and you can even see the benefit of adding more tooling or taking out some tooling. So uh, you can really, it's, for me, it's like a video game. So it's a little bit uh, nerd saying that I'm, I'm playing with a folder and lure software. But uh. Then I have got a new name for you. It's called CS Karma, Counter-Strike Karma. That is, uh, that is your video game, right, Jordi? <laughs> Uh, but uh, but this is so see this is this is the point so someone like me without having the experience is using the software to understand what can be done so imagine that you have a, a, a newcomer a new operator in front of this machine by having or by using the software he can really make a lot of uh, progress uh, in regards of the others in regard to our competitors if they have the same i will i will say that it's better that you ask them uh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk in favor or against them. So. I, you know, to be honest, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, people sometimes ask my about my opinion about what I see, and and you know if I can recommend anything. And the reason why I never do it is basically because first of all, I'm not running a, a printing or packaging business, uh, so so my my skills in that perspective is limited. Uh, another thing is also that that I think that. You know, we we work in a very clever industry, so I think that everybody is producing the right equipment for the segments they address. So sometimes it's maybe more difficult to address the right segment for the right technology. So, so, uh, so I, I appreciate that you uh, leave that to your competitors, and I think that is, I think that is one of the things I like about this industry that we we for the most we talk nicely to each other and 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 respect uh, the the marketplace. And I also know from that perspective, Jordi, that you have as part of your um i don't know if i always agree with you but i think that you have a very open mind towards working with with a lot of different partners so uh, and, and of course with the, with the, with your new position with karma uh, i guess that you have a uh, huge interest in selling more machines right <laughs> yeah, yeah sure so this is uh this is what drive uh, my day so uh, uh let me talk a little bit so it's uh, about me and my position so it's chief business officer what does it mean um, I, I, I'm not sure but whatever is related to business and to increase the business uh, it's something that uh, more or less is under me at Kama meaning sales, marketing, strategy, uh, partnerships uh, uh, unfortunately uh, nowadays I'm spending much more time discussing with new partners new alliances uh, and then, than selling. So I would love to jump into my car and going to visit customers, but this is not uh, happening at the moment. So I also have to reshape a little bit my sales team. Mm. This is something that we're doing uh, right now. Mm. But 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 yeah, so uh, we want to sell more machines. We have, uh, we have uh, a clear sales budget, a sales uh, uh, production for the next units. Uh, since I'm at the company again, uh, or since I'm in the company, we're moving a little bit better. Uh, it's not because of me, it's most likely it's because of the circumstances, but now at least we are uh, over exceeding the expectations. So we are uh, selling much more than what was uh, planned, which is always good and much more to come, sure. Mm. Um, is, 
is the products that you have currently is that like uh, taking market shares from competitors or is it expanding the market in your view i will say we are expanding the market so uh, it, of course there is always the potential that we are fighting with one of our competitors mm. in one case or here or there because uh yeah at the end of the day we're talking about machines to do similar things uh, different advantages or disadvantages or at the end of the day is the customer who can decide because of price or because of conditions or whatever so in many cases we are uh, fighting with some of our competitors but it's always good to be in the in the fight so i i, I like to be in this battle so if the one is very sad is when you don't even have the chance to be part of these uh, uh, fights uh, in but in in our case in the majority of our customers we help them to grow and to develop and to expand to new businesses mm -hmm. so we have plenty of commercial printers who are asking for our solutions to jump into packaging and they don't want to buy the most expensive machine to do something that they cannot do today because they don't have the market or the, mm -hmm. or the customers mm -hmm. so they say uh, sell me something that i can use for my commercial business and which i can use to expand to packaging mm -hmm. or we have many packaging printers which uh because of the format that they use uh, b2 or smaller mm -hmm. because the type of production that they do mm -hmm. they don't need anything else than camera and they keep growing with us and they keep uh, evolving together with us mm -hmm. um as you as i mentioned before you have worked in um, in the digital space for for many years now uh, I think that if you look at the label segment today, it seems that the hybrids and the digital and the flexo machine seems to have like found a, for now at least, some kind of good level of, uh, let's say, market shares in this segment because most converters are basically using all the technologies to serve the customers. I think that uh, also when you work for HP, when I think the 30,000 was the first Indigo that was supposed to be like focusing on packaging and flexible, uh, sorry, on, on the folding carton. Uh, when I see printed companies, it doesn't seem that folding carton has really taken <laughs> off digitally as I think uh, some customers uh, and, and companies expected. But with, uh, uh, with more and more cut sheet inkjet devices also getting into the market and also the expectations for, for, for cut sheet devices and inkjet devices at Drupal, do you, think, do you think that will change and then feed a new uh, layer of potential customers for Karma? Sure. Uh, so uh, when I joined HP back in 2012, 13, I, I don't remember. So uh, I was uh, pretty young. Uh, I, I, I was uh, dealing or I was in charge of 30,000 in EMEA. So uh, it was it was uh, it was fantastic. So uh, Alon Barshani, he used many times uh, in, the, in his presentation something talking about the 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 best and the worst times uh, it's like charles dickens uh, whatever and and it's true because uh, it's something that fit very very well to what we were doing because we were approaching new markets with a very innovative solution very disruptive and all of us uh, i'm talking about all the market not only the people working for indigo or kama who was by then already a, a partner of indigo just to approach the folding carton uh, customers from different perspective mm -hmm. all of us we were super excited thinking wow folding carton is going to be the next big thing mm -hmm. in the printing business i mean digital folding carton mm -hmm. uh, but you know what uh, 10 15 years later uh, we're still in the same situation so i have been uh, i have been in the meantime uh, held the work selling prime fire also mainly oriented to to packaging printers mm -hmm. instead of electrophotography it was an engine solution there are some others lambda conic and bauer with the very jet so ma many other uh, players yeah, so, uh bringing the, uh, yeah you said very yeah, yeah of course that is uh, yeah, the very jet the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so but many 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 vendors they, uh, so of course indigo they keep attacking the market with uh, electrophotography mm -hmm. fujifilm uh, uh conic and bauer tours Many companies, they are still seeing digital folding carton as the next big thing. Why? The reason is very simple. Uh, everything is moving out from plastics. I don't have nothing against plastics or whoever is selling flexible packaging machines. Or, but folding carton, it's always a little bit more. It has the last piece of uh, sustainability. So everything is uh, done with carton. Uh, everything is much more sustainable. Uh, 
And you know what? When everything is sustainable, when everything is uh, eco-friendly, mm -hmm. printing digital makes a lot of sense because then even the uh, power consumption is reduced, the waste is reduced. So it's something that comes together, printing digitally and, and, and folding carton. And this is, again, this is a fantastic opportunity for CAM. So uh, thanks God and thanks to my previous experience with at many customer and uh, many companies, I still keep a lot of friends in many of these companies, uh, friends and relationships that I'm using mm. just to expand a little bit the network, the network of Kama and wow. to see how we can attack the market from many different mm. angles. Um, I, I couldn't help think about because I, in, in many ways, I agree with you when it comes to the digitalization, also folding cards. But I was wondering, and maybe maybe you disagree with me, but I think that one of the reasons why folding cards on still seems to be a little bit on, let's say, in the in the beginning of a, a new life cycle of products is also maybe I think the people are worried a little bit about uh, the pricing of the going digital. Because, I mean, often when you do folding cards and you have thousands of boxes because you never produce one olive oil or or two soaps right i mean it's, it's always a little bit still i mean if you look at the finished product side there still seems to be quite a lot of of a mass production in order to keep prices down and as we serve a packaging purpose of course i know that packaging with with variable data and and uh, qr codes and barcodes and all that thing there's a demand for 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 having that digital so i was just wondering I mean, we don't have to discuss it right now. Actually, I just want to go into something else. Jordi, sorry about that. <laughs> Jordi, um, uh, coming up, uh, Pretty United in Atlanta and Drupa in uh, Dusseldorf uh, 24. Uh, are you there? Yeah, so uh, I will be Printing United. Hopefully, I will see you. Uh, hopefully, uh, the two of us, we're going to take one of our selfies uh, of together. Course. Uh, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, after Printing United, I will fly to Shanghai for All in Print, mm -hmm. which uh, we expect is going to be a big show. We have plenty of expectations on, on, on the way the Chinese market for us is. Is, is, is that really right important. after Printing United? So it's not right after, but I think uh, if I'm not wrong, Printing United is uh, mid October. Uh, all in print is oh, yeah. mm -hmm. by the end of November. Okay. I, by the end of October, sorry. By, by the end of October. Okay. So you you have time I'm to get sure that, yeah. you have time to get home, and then you go out again, and now and then you have like I I know that you will not rest, but then are you also exhibiting at uh, Drupa? Sure, sure. Drupa for us is like the world championship, so we want to be there and we want to win the final. So so, you have uh, so we are not going. So we are not going to only to participate. We want to also to introduce some of our new products mm -hmm. uh, because we are expanding uh, a little bit our our view. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand what are the new demands of the market. Everything is about digitalization. Mm -hmm. uh, even uh, and as I said, we have a pure digital mindset, but we do conventional machines. Mm -hmm. But this still some segments that we can explore where we can bring all the know-how we have. We can bring all the Kama unique selling point of fast changeovers and all of this. And this is what we want to do. I don't want to uh, tell you many, many things about this because I expect to unveil uh, the solution slowly. Uh, we already post a teaser of this new solution. The only thing that we comment on that is that something new is coming and it will be amazing. <laughs> So, yeah, it will be more than believe me. It will be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and something and then, that I have to say. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. The next time you will see the new, something new is gaming, right? <laughs> gaming and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but but uh, as I was telling you, I'm going to be uh, flying to all the shows. Uh, my my calendar. Uh, the most important things that I have to do before the end of the year are Printing United, All in Print, and non-event in Copenhagen. Of so, course. Uh, I want to use the opportunity to say that because this is one of the events that I have uh, in my calendar, Mark, uh, and something that I don't want to miss. So uh, if someone is listening to us, and I'm pretty sure that some, someone is listening to us, I would like to recommend 
to join non-event if there are still some seats available because this is not a massive yeah. event so no there are seats ava- yeah. there are seats available okay. and 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 uh, i can tell you we got the first uh, installment from the hotel yesterday so i'm pretty sure my colleague henrik he would like as many people to register and pay right away so uh, <laughs> let us just Perfect. be very uh, honest about that too sure. um so uh, jordi i just uh, want to uh, thank you very much for this uh, wonderful uh, time with you here on inkish uh, get for uh, get to work uh i guess that you have to get to work because you work quite a lot these days right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so and, and you know what morton i was uh i spent yesterday i don't know two three hours preparing a beautiful presentation to be and, used today and, as, and as yeah you, but yeah so. and as you didn't tell me anything i was just like hmm had, did Jordi have time to do it or didn't he not have time for it so i thought that you no, would do like eh, and i have a presentation so i'm sorry about no, that but uh, no, no, no. It's too long, so now, uh, yeah, now it's of course impossible. But yeah, in any case, uh, I prefer to have this talk with you because it's always, I think, it's always better to have this uh, one-to-one talk about the market and, and than just seeing uh, information on different slides. But yeah, uh, let me say the following: in case that someone of the, or one of the people listening to us he wants to see the presentation, I can set up a, a meeting with anyone who is interested and in going through the. And through I, that. I promise you, next time I will ask you if you have a presentation, regardless, uh, because okay. of course you have yeah. one. But uh, next time, okay. maybe we do something live from from comments. That that would be fun, right? <laughs> it would be fantastic. Okay. Yeah. All right, Jordi, uh, see you in Atlanta in a little less than three weeks. And uh, basically, all the best and take care. Same to you, Morten. Thank you very much. Enjoy the day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.